The first of these was divination. Well, we know a good deal about divination because especially tarot divination, but also others have been somewhat revived since the 1960s. But what is divination? You might say it's fortune telling, trying to figure out by way of some cards or throwing some coins or something of that sort as to what is going to happen. Well, that is not divination. Divination, which was, of course, a very important part of life in the ancient world among the Greeks and the Romans and so forth, literally meant consulting the divinities for advice. Now, I don't know whether you believe in divinities or whether that makes much sense after most of us come from a monotheistic background, but let's say the issue is that there are powers, whatever we may wish to call them, in the universe and perhaps in the deeper regions of ourselves. And these powers are both capable and not only willing but eager to give us guidance in the perplexities and difficulties of our lives. If we learn how to avail ourselves of such guidance, our life and our consciousness is thereby considerably enriched. That is the whole essence of divination. It is not really and primarily what is going to happen in the future. And so one begins to look for the signs of guidance. And these signs have often been organized into particular modalities like the ancient Romans, for instance, who learned a lot from both from the Etruscans and from the Greeks and otherwise, were full of divinatory methods. Whatever they looked at, they could use for divination, the flight of the birds, the flowing of the water, everything under the sun. But let's say in the Golden Dawn, they used to a great extent the tarot cards, which were almost unknown at the time. The Golden Dawn were the people who, the first people who really brought into use among Western peoples the Chinese oracle, the Yi Ching or Yi King, the Book of Changes, Geomancy, which is a much simpler form of divination, and of course also astrology. Why did they advise the use of these things? In order to refine the sensitivity the magical imagination of the person, someone who becomes affinitized toward the creative use of a divinatory modality will have developed a sensitivity toward the imaginal world. And the imaginal world is not imaginary in the sense of non-existent, but rather it consists of images the images of various realities which are in that great intermediate area between ourselves and ultimate reality. Another preliminary exercise that the Golden Dawn 